I'm a platypus. Written and illustrated by Moment Johnson. Along the riverbank in the rainforest of Tasmania lived Plato the platypus. He happily dived, rolled, and flipped in the water, skimming the bottom of the riverbed with his beak in search for insects, shrimp, or some other delicious creatures to eat. When he found some, he stored the food in his cheeks until he was ready to exit the water and feast. One evening, while he was coming up for air, he saw a funny-looking creature. Hello, Plato called out to the stranger. I've never seen your kind before. What are you? Me? Why, I'm a beaver. I'm not from here. I'm on vacation exploring your rivers and lakes. What are you? I'm a platypus. What's a platypus? Me. I'm a platypus. But what are you? You look like me, except you're different. I see your tail is like mine. Do you use it for steering when you swim? Yes, answered the platypus. And your fur is also like mine. Is it waterproof? It is. I saw you hunting for food just now, so you must be nocturnal like me as well. I am. Well then, you must be some kind of rodent. That's what I am. But where are your sharp teeth? Here, let me show you how to take down a tree. You need to be building dams like me. Plato followed the beaver along a trail to a tall pine tree. He watched as the beaver began gnawing his way through the bark. Witch chips flew everywhere. Now you try, instructed the beaver. Plato started chewing on the trunk with his beak. Chomp, 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 went in his mouth. He tried as hard as he could, but without teeth, chewing through a tree is very difficult. All he had done was make the bark very wet with his spit. The platypus backed away from the tree with a saddened look. I don't think I'm like you, he said to the beaver. I'll never be able to chew this tree down. You just need to grow some teeth like mine, the beaver told him. Then you'll be perfect. The beaver turned to walk away. I'm off to go exploring now. Just keep practicing. Plato waddled back over to the riverside. As he was about to crawl under some tree roots to have a rest, he noticed a lizard perched on top of him. Hello, he said politely. The lizard looked up. My, you're a strange one, she said to the platypus. What exactly are you? I'm a platypus, answered Plato. What in the world is a platypus? Me, I'm a platypus. Hmm, pondered the lizard. I'm a bearded dragon. Normally I live in a much drier place, but today I wanted to see something new. And you are definitely something new. But I'm wondering, I noticed you walk like me. Perhaps, then, you are a type of lizard. Perhaps, answered Plato. Do you lay eggs? My mother laid an egg, and I crawled out of it. Do you have venom to protect yourself from predators? I do. So do I. And I can tell your kind has been around for a long, long time. Same as me. I'm sure of it. You're a reptile. But why are you covered in fur? You shouldn't have fur. Here, let me show you how to properly be a lizard. Climb this tree with me. The bearded dragon dug her claws into the trunk of the tree and began to climb. Come on, platypus, she called down. Plato shuffled his body between the tree trunk and its roots, managing to climb atop them. He then reached with his front webbed feet up the tree. He pawed at the tree over and over, but his webbed toes were made for swimming, not climbing. Come on, platypus, the lizard yelled again, now perched on a high tree branch. What are you waiting for? Plato tried jumping, he tried gripping the tree between his feet and using his back legs, all with no success. It's useless, he told the bearded dragon. I can't climb trees. I don't think I make a very good lizard. Just keep practicing. You'll get it, encouraged the bearded dragon. The platypus sulked off, now feeling worse than he did before. He returned to the water to search for something good to eat, but the excitement of it had faded. I don't make a good lizard, and I don't make a good beaver, he thought. They're right. I am different. After filling his belly full of shrimp and crawfish, Plato retired to his home, a small burrow dug into the earth. He slept through the day, waiting to wake until after the sun had set. Plato crawled out of his hole through a tunnel in the ground. He was starving after such a long sleep. Platypus would require a lot of food, and he was ready to find some. He used his beak to kick up the soil at the bottom of the river, sifting around in search of tasty insects. When his cheeks were full, he surfaced, climbing onto the shore to enjoy his meal. While eating, a duck came noisily flying down beside him. Hey there, greeted the duck. Hello, duck, Plato re politely responded. I've never seen you here before. What are you? I'm a platypus. What's a platypus? Me. I'm a platypus. Well, I'm a blue-billed duck. You are very similar to me. I see you have a bill just like mine. 
Yes, I see that, said Plato. And your feet are also like mine, so you must be a good swimmer like me. I am a good swimmer. Does your mother lay eggs? She does. Well, so does mine. That settles it, then. You are definitely a duck. Don't waste all your time here on the ground. Come and fly with me. I don't think I can, Plato told him. Oh, come on. It's easy. Just do like me and flap your wings. Plato began waving his front legs back and forth as fast as he could. He created a little wind, which stirred the surrounding leaves, but he remained on the ground. I don't think I fly, Plato said to the blue-billed duck. Nonsense. Perhaps you just need a little help getting off the ground. Crawl up on those rocks over there for an extra lift. The platypus does as instructed. Once on top of the rocks, he started flapping his front legs as fast as he could. He leapt off the rock, still flapping, and crash! He fell to the ground. I don't think I make a very good duck, sniffled Plato. I think you just need more practice, the duck told him. See you around, he said, and then flew off. The evening had started out so good. The river was full of shrimp, Plato's favorite. But now he's beginning to question himself. Everyone expected so much from him, and yet he didn't seem to be able to do any of it. A sound distracted him from his thoughts. Who's out there? he asked. Just me, a rooster responded while walking out of the jungle. I was watching you with that duck. Oh, sighed Plato. I think I know your problem, the rooster assured him. The duck was right. You are a bird, just not a duck. You are much more like me than he. I am? Of course. Our kind lay eggs, too. And I noticed your trouble with flying. Well, I can't fly either. But look here, the rooster pointed to his feet. You have spurs just like me. You're right, I do, answered the platypus. And you heard me rustling around in those leaves from pretty far away. So you must also have excellent hearing like me. That's true. Well, that settles it then. You're some sort of chicken. Let me hear you crow. Crow? questioned the platypus. You know, like this. Plato gave it a try. His sound came out more like the cooing of a human baby. He tried again louder. This time there was more of a growl to it, a rumbling. He tried again. A mixture of cooing and growling came out. Not too bad, lied the rooster. Just keep trying. You'll get there. The platypus sulked off, back to the shallow waters, and began searching for worms and larvae to eat once more. The next evening, after waking from his slumber, Plato went for a swim. Just as he was about to dive back under the water, something caught his eye. Another creature was swimming in the river with him. Hey, Plato called out. Hey, yourself, responded the other animal, climbing out onto the river bank. I'm starving. Where's all the good food around here? I was just fishing for some crustaceans in the river, Plato told him. Care to join me? Disgusting. Why are you eating that? We need to find us a good river rat to eat. I, I don't eat that. Of course you do. Look at you. You're just like me. I am? But what are you? A Tasmanian devil, of course. But I'm a platypus. I see you out here swimming all alone. And see me? I like to be alone, too. And I can swim, just like you. And we're both awake in the night, both nocturnal. True. And I'm a carnivore. Are you? Yes. Okay, and see my tail here? I store fat in it for reserves. What about you? Yeah, I use my tail for that, too. So, as I was saying, then, you are like me. You're a marsupial. Come and find some tasty river rats with me. Plato reluctantly followed the Tasmanian devil along the riverside. Tracking a strange scent, they came upon a dead wombat on the edge of the forest. Even better, said the Tasmanian devil. Let me show you how to properly eat this. The devil opened his mouth wide and took a bite out of his favorite meal. Now it's your turn, he offered the platypus. Plato looked down at the wombat, up at ta the Tasmanian devil, and back down at the wombat once more. You know, he said to his friend, that may look tasty to you, but it does not to me. I'm a platypus. I am not a Tasmanian devil, or a marsupial of any kind. I'm not a rooster, or a duck, or any other sort of bird. I'm not a beaver, and I'm not a lizard. I am me. I'm a platypus. I don't crow, I don't climb, or fly, or build dams, and I most definitely do not eat dead animals laying on the floor's floor. I may be different than most other animals and not fit into any special mortar category, but I'm me, and I'm perfect, just the way I am. So enjoy your meal, Tasmanian Devil.
It's special. Just for you. The platypus waddled back towards the river with a huge smile on his face. The other animals might have thought he should be like them, but he finally realized he only needs to be like Plato. He happily dived, rolled, and flipped in the water once more, skimming the bottom with his beak in search for a delicious meal to eat for a platypus. You can purchase this book, I'm a Platypus, at www.losttruthpress.com or on Amazon.com.